Hi everybody, this is the third do-it-yourself video from Electrocursus. In this video, I will present you a 5 watts CW DDS transceiver. Okay, it's a uh, transmitting and receiving equipment for amateur radios and fits in the 40 meter band. Okay, it's a homemade equipment. I will explain you through this video how can you build your own equipment and it's a uh, low budget i would say it's a small budget uh, uh, cost uh, to make this this equipment and it's very interesting because uh, you can use this equipment of course for morse code transmitting transmission and receiving but you can use this equipment also for a, a audio radio phone receiving okay it it uh, have some interesting features like ssb CW reception and also CW transmission and you have also uh, amplitude modulation reception uh, SSB phony reception and it's very very interesting how can you reach so long distance with only 5 watts so with only 5 watts you can reach thousands of kilometers and it's very interesting because it depends on the antenna you have the, at home and also it depends the propagation, the conditions, the weather conditions, the propagation conditions in your area. It's very important to have a good propagation, otherwise you cannot reach uh, some kilometers from, from, your, from, your, from your shack, from your home. So, this is basically what we have okay i will turn on so here in the dial you can see the the central frequency for the carrier you are transmitting okay you can use this knob as a fine tune so you can also change the decimal parts of the frequency you have i want to show you here okay it's really nice. You can change also the reception mode, like I told you before, SSB CW, you can also receive in amplitude modulation or in SSB phony. Okay. Uh, you have here in this size uh, a volume. Okay. Uh, it, this equipment comes with a small, really small um, speaker here. Okay but you can also plug a earphone you have here in this plug uh, input for for manipulator for key gear okay and you have here the output uh, for your antenna of course and of course the power supply okay the power connection for the equipment and it's standard 30.8 volts the same voltage you can use for for, for another radius it's important uh, to know that you can use lower voltage of course you can use from 9 to something close to 15 volts I would not recommend to use this voltage okay use maximum 30.8 14 volts uh, with 9 to 12 watts you you decrease of course your output power this equipment uh, this construction reads close to 5 watts but if of course if you decrease your voltage to 12 volts you decrease also your power between 3 and 4 watts which is sometimes more than enough for a good communication when you have of course a good uh, propagation condition in your area so it's it's nice because you can carry this to a to a walking to a hiking in the mountain for example and for making some expedition it's a very nice uh, uh, equipment it's simple it's small it's cheap and i hope you like enjoy the next minutes of this video i will explain you in details how can you make the hardware part how can you build your own uh, equipment and also how can you make adjustment in the software and how it works the software which is based on the stm32 microcontroller and you, you understand uh, the concepts of of the project the concept of the equipment and you can make your own modifications for example in the software to fit different possibilities i hope you enjoyed this video 
and stay some minutes more and understand how it works. See you. So let's start now some practical experiments. The first experiment is to test the power output of the equipment. So to make this, this test I'm using here, as you can see, uh, uh, a load, okay, a non-irradiation load, 50 ohms, okay, so we are not doing this with an antenna, it's in a controlled environment, okay, and we are using our power meter here, and the SWR, SWR meter too. So I will try first to show you the calibration, just to give you an idea that this this uh, equipment it's calibrated for the output right now so I you decrease the the manipulating speed so that it's possible with this feature here decrease or increase the manipulation Morse code speed so you decrease the speed so you can see uh, better the results here in the in the equipment visor okay it's possible to make adjustments for the tune, the tone, but this is just for for um, for listening, okay? For for audio receiving, okay? This is not actually make anything in the transmission. Remember, it's a uh, uh, a carrier, okay? And you have this carrier for transmitting, and you are not modulating uh, a audio on this on this transmission, on this emission, okay? So it's it's just for receiving uh, your, it's a feedback for your manipulating uh, skills and your manipulating transmission, okay? So first decrease the speed in the maximum you can for the transmission. So now we're gonna operate, okay, with that dash. And you can see by the video, we are reaching the end of the instrument, okay? We are really, really close to the calibration point of the equipment. Okay, so it's it's well calibrated for the tests we are doing now. So we are measuring in the scale of 20 watts. I will change here for the power, and you can see the result. We are really close, almost achieving the desired 5 watts output. That's it. For the transmission, it's a, it's a good test you can do at home. So when you are building your equipment, and of course you have if you have an oscilloscope, it's very nice to measure between the different stages of your your transceiver, so you can calibrate uh, for a better operation. Okay. In the next minutes of the video, I will explain you the circuit basis and I will explain you some documentations that can help you to achieve the better performance for the equipment. So let's now put a, an antenna instead of a load to make the receiving tests to show you uh, the audio you are getting from the equipment, okay, from the receiving part of the equipment. And so let's start. Now are you gonna take my my earphone I you increase the volume okay so as you can see now you can see how the reception it's working okay. so it's a very good reception Positive, é fácil, mas... Let's play a little bit here. Let's move to... To the CW area, okay? To the CW frequencies. Look at that. I just changed my mode to SSB CW. And now you can listen. Somebody's transmitting in Morse code in CW. You can make also a fine tuning here, for example. in order to achieve a better tuning. Okay. It's just showing you how it works. It's really, really cool. Let's 
Ele, ele quis sintonizar aqui, de repente daria para fazer algum teste comparando a diferença aí entre uma coisa e outra, tá bom? É, e aí eu tenho uma, uma Cushcraft A4S é, com módulo aí de 40, então é, é o que eu tenho, é esse aí que eu consigo operar. Né? Engata duas pernas aqui, ó, tá esticadas de polo lá, né? Aí é só alegria. Tentar ver se eu consigo alguma coisa aí, a antena já, já tá no rumo de lá, viu, Cadu? <risos> e tem que ficar esperto, o cara que eles começam a entrar é aquela chuva, né? So it's just a good demonstration of the reception part of the equipment. I hope you enjoy and continue watching this video because now we will explain in details about the circuit and also about the software of this uh, equipment. Thank you very much. Okay, let's look now for the hardware part. Okay, this is the actual assembly you have for the for the the radio for the transceiver. Okay, as you can see here, in the in the transmitting uh, part, we are using the Rockmite QRP transceiver board. Okay, uh, this is a do-it-yourself. Uh, kit that you can buy that you can purchase uh, in different shops like eBay and so on and you can build yourself or you have option to buy this this uh, this board already assembled okay in my case I bought the the, the board the components and I assembled by myself also it's good uh, to understand the principles of the transmission and the principle of the transformer and coils you have here it's very nice just to give you an idea this is a very cheap uh, equipment this is a very cheap kit you can you can purchase on the internet and uh, of course I you use in my uh, actual assembly only the transmission part of the circuit okay I will only use here the 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 power amplifier okay the PA I use here the low pass uh, output filter which is very important to avoid uh, interference to avoid spurious to to avoid harmonics uh, in the in your uh, irradiation system okay it's, it's very important this this filter and uh, uh, they claim on the internet some 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 parts comes from china with no not quality uh, toroids here okay not quality toroid units here and you decrease your output power okay uh, the one i bought it comes with the original t37 uh, I don't remember exactly the, the, the code, but I'll show you later on, T37-2, something like that. And it seems to be the original one, okay? It's working fine, it's driving the it's driving the desired 5 watts, or at least close to the 5 watts. And uh, I also keep it here, it's just down uh, in this board here, the original microcontroller, okay? With the original firmware okay uh, i'm using this firmware to convert my electric pulses here okay so i'm using as i already told you before my own manipulator morse code manipulator but i'm using the firmware installing this microcontroller okay to control my receiving tone okay which is actually uh, possible to hear from this really small speaker okay or even directly through my earphone okay and this microcontroller is also responsible for the manipulation speed for the transmitting speed okay so you have some push buttons I already show you before in this video that you con can control the the, the tone from the receiving audio of your manipulation and also the manipulating speed 
that's really really interesting so i keep intact the microcontroller with the original firmware of course you can use uh, another microcontroller you can use uh, my own manipulator project okay i already sent the videos to the internet some 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 months ago but of course you need in this case to provide uh, some pwm outputs i had this in my my manipulator but you have to connect this pwm i will explain you in the circuit board so in this case it will be possible to hear your transmission otherwise you cannot hear your transmission you are just send you are just switching some transistors here to send the carrier directly to the power amplifier but you cannot hear the feedback from your transmission so it's it's something important if you want to replace this microcontroller to the project i already show you some some weeks ago good so this is all you need to know about the transmitter i assembled the whole unit before so i made all the tests to achieve the desired power in the output okay it's very important uh, to assemble in the right way those coils okay it's very 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 important okay so continue here i will show you some diagrams from the from the rock might from the super rock might so it, this this i download from the internet and those guys take care they really take care about the instructions in this in this manual so they explain you how can you assemble this in details okay so all the components all the part list uh, everything is inside he, this assembly instructions manual which is very very important if you want to assemble your rock might in a rock might in a proper way okay so let's continue here to explain you some other details through this through this manual okay they claim you can transmit at least should be at least 4.5 watts output into the watt meter okay if you connect 12 volts as i already told you before okay this is the code for the the red toroid that i told you before uh, they they have here some some really cool instructions it's, it's really well prepared this this manual okay of course i'm not using the receiving part of the equipment but but i assemble it uh, just in, in case to test this equipment before make my modifications okay so this is the instructions to assemble your your toroids okay for for the different parts of the circuit okay and also this is for a very important one for the output filter for the low pass filter okay they have here some instructions for for audio and so on which is if you want to bypass the cpu it's possible doing this but remember as i told you you have to provide some some way to return the 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 pwm frequency of your manipulation otherwise you cannot hear and it's not good when you are transmitting to not have your own feedback of your transmission but this is not necessary if you wanna to if you wanna to assembly the the circuit i will show you okay so you have if you have a uh, oscilloscope it's it's good because you can measure the different waves here the different signals and you can compare if it's working or if it's not working during the assembly okay of course this transmitter okay uses fixed frequency so it means uh, you have a crystal oscillator in the center frequency of 7023 kilohertz and you have also a receiver okay with a really narrow filter in the same frequency what we are doing with this equipment is to provide a dds so you can select the the transmitting frequency in the proper range i will explain you later and you can also select the receiving 
uh, frequency. It's it's very common. It's very very nice to have this possibility. So we will just replace. We will just delete the 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 oscillator part of this the circuit. We will also delete the input filter from the circuit and also other parts that I will explain you through this video okay so it's very nice to have this good documentation to follow and this is actually the actual circuit okay so as i explain you before this part we will replace okay we are not using this part this is the oscillator part and this is the is the, the fine tuning in for the oscillator for the the transmitting carrier okay this is why you have here this di diode. Uh, okay, we replace also, but, but we will keep intact this part of the transmitter, of the transmitter, okay, of the transceiver, which is which is responsible for the transmitting. Okay, so you have here the power amplifier, you have here the low pass uh, filter to avoid harmonics, you have here some preamplifier stages and so on, and the oscillator. I will keep all this intact. We will substitute, okay, we will replace completely this this filter here. I will leave the diodes here, okay, but I will replace these components. Otherwise, we will have here a narrow filter in the frequency of 7023 MHz. And we want to move in the 40 meters band range. So we have to replace this to another another filter okay instead of uh, the mixing part okay the ne 602 we we'll keep this because this is very important is where we we mix it the dds input frequency okay to the coming receiving signal okay so we will extract here some information and all this part here that you have the demodulator and the and the audio amplifier, the original audio amplifier, we will also replace through my through my circuit. I will explain you later. Okay. But remember, these components I leave it in my circuit board. I didn't uh, remove those components. I remove those capacitors, as I will explain you now i will remove those capacitors so i don't have any physical connection between the mixing output and the demodulator and the amplifier so i remove those capacitors i will remove this capacitor too so i don't have any more the connector connection between the the trans the, the transistor key one emitter okay which is my output from the oscillator i will not connect the signal anymore here in the oscillator b input so you just remove this capacitor i will put a, a wire here connecting di directly to my dds to, de to generate the to generate the intermediate frequency i want to mix it with the input signal okay it's the best explanation i think um so you keep intact this part because it's the microcontroller responsible for the Morse code, as I already told you, the speed and so on. Uh, instead of using the circuit board switch, I will remove those switches. It's not necessary if you want, but I will remove. Okay, so in order to use the printed circuit board pads to connect the information here to an external push bottle. As you already saw in my video, I'm using external push bottles instead of those uh, in circuit push bottles let's call like that okay and i also will remove this jack and i will extend those connections to an external jack to connect my manipulator my keyer okay another important thing i will keep the i will remove this uh this jack but i will connect this information here this output directly to my audio amplifier why because here 
I have the PWM output generation from the micro microcontroller. So I have a feedback from my manipulation. So with this feedback, I will just connect it here. I can use, I'm still using this potentiometer to adjust the audio uh, amplitude. And I will connect this directly to my audio amplifier. So I can still, I still hearing my manipulation okay signal my, my manipulation sound for a feedback proposals so with this transistor here okay you can switch this one okay and of course you you polarize okay you make the correct polarization dc polarization to this to this uh, transistor in order to amplify your signal and send it to the power amplifier circuit okay that's all from this from this scratch here from the circuit i will show you now the modifications okay okay so what we really did in our circuit in our original rock might uh, pcb i remove as i told you before i remove this crystal i didn't remove those components here it's not necessary okay because I don't have any physical connection anymore now between this pad and this one. Okay, here I have the polarization circuit for the first preamplifier. In this in this point of the circuit, I connected my DDS clock zero carrier. That comes from another board that I will explain you. Okay. Just to give you one one photograph, this is the board here responsible for making these connections. Uh, important hints: try to use short as as short as possible connections, okay? And make a good grounding here in this. I'm not using a, a, a real PCB, okay? I'm using some. Uh, we call the here universal PCBs, okay? We are using these prototype PCBs, but I made a good GND, good grounding connection in one of these these lines here, okay? Uh, and I connect ground from this wire. I connect also ground from other side of the from the other side of the circuit and so on, okay? Also important to make short connections between the points that I will explain you now and the rock might PCB. So I have here short uh, wire connection, short wire connection, and so on and so on. Okay. So one of these connections, the one here with this green uh, wire, the blue one is connected to the to the GND to the grounding. So look at that. I have grounding. I have carrier. So instead it's not showing this picture but instead of the crystal i remove from the circuit board here i directly connect this this wire here so i assemble something here i explain you now ah this is the audio amplifier okay so coming back to this to this explanation so this is the dds clock zero carry which is actually something here okay i will explain you in the circuit board uh okay i also remove this uh connection here okay it's still using the same transistors and that's the same transistor the same circuit the same uh resistors but i'm not you connecting anymore in my mixing okay this clock line here other components i remove those crystals responsible for the receiving filter the narrow one so i will remove those crystals and i will replace those crystals with a 150 picofarads capacitor and a 20 micro Henry's coil so i i i assemble this coil by myself okay so i will show you here it's not so difficult you can use some ferrite okay material and uh, ferromagnetic material and you can make a lot of turns with a specific wire here it's very important 
to have a measurement tool, to have an instrument to measure this inductance, okay? So it's very, very important and it helps you a lot to design those, those circuits too. Okay, and also I, I put it here, a 82 pico Faraday capacitor directly to the ground. This was not in the original circuit, okay? I removed this 33 pico Faraday capacitor, okay? And I keep this 33 pico Faraday uh, original capacitor in my board, okay? These are modifications I did actually in the Rockmite, but I still have another modification here in the, in the receiving part, okay? So, as I told you, I didn't remove actually these components here. I leave those components in my circuit. But if you don't want to assemble this component, it's up to you. If you go, want to go directly to, uh, to, the, to the assembling, I'm explaining you now. Uh, okay, so in order to not have this, this circuit connecting uh, in my mixer anymore, I just remove those three capacitors. Removing those three capacitors, I was able to remove entirely this circuit from my mixing and also to remove this connection here, okay? So, what I did, I used the same pads from the original capacitors and I put some wires connecting to the, for, for example, this, this oscillator B is an input of the mixer, the NE602. In this input, I connect the DDS clock. Uh, it's in Portuguese, FE, but in English is intermediated frequency, okay? So I connect this. This is the output comes from the DDS, but I, as I will explain you now, I made some... Uh, I made some adaptations, okay? I didn't connect it directly to the output of the DDS, okay? I made some small circuit here to, to make a good impedance adaptation and so and so and also, uh, okay. And this output A and output B, okay? Those outputs, they are going directly to the to an intermediated frequency coil, okay? The famous TOCO, uh, 455 uh, coils that you can transformers that you can purchase on the internet and so on. Okay, this is what I did. Some more modifications. I'm not using this uh, switch anymore. This switch is responsible to is responsible to send some information to the microcontroller in order to transmit a message. So. In this original rock mite circuit, you can connect uh, RS232 connection between your computer, use some software. You can send some message to the microcontroller, some CW, some, some Morse code message, store this message in the microcontroller. And every time you wanna trigger this message, you can push this button. This is very useful for for some contests, for some, uh, yeah, okay, like that. Uh, what I did uh, also here, the VCC is a 5 volt VCC provided from the voltage regulator here of the original rock might so i took this vcc from this part of the circuit which is very close to my so-called intermediated frequency board the one i i show you before here okay so i'm using this to make some uh some feeding for my for my circuit there and this is the audio amplifier I told you, this is the output I'm using to connect to the input of my audio amplifier circuit. So, moving forward to those circuits, okay? Now you can see these boards, okay? This one and that one, okay? So, 
the first one this board here called intermediated frequency board you can see here uh, the toco 455 transformer here coils okay is actually a transformer so you are connecting here the output from the mixing I explained you before look at that those outputs from the mixing are connecting directly to the input of my filter as you can see here by the orange and white wires so I connect them. I may try to make as short as possible was quite hard because sometimes I have to remove this board and make some maintenance maintenance uh, it's look at that I use it some nylon uh, screws and I just glue those spacers and the screws to my to my to my board here okay so it's very nice because here is well attached okay those those two boards and I don't have so much movement here it's very cool okay the output from this uh, toco we connect directly to the this is very important one this is the ceramic filter okay responsible responsible to filter the 455 kilohertz but i choose because the one i found easily here in the market the gw version the gw version have a bandwidth about 10 kilohertz like my zone plus minus 4.5 plus minus 5 kilohertz so close to 10 kilohertz it's a good filter for audio proposals okay for receiving audio it's fantastic but for for Morse code for CW it's, it's not narrow it's actually a large filter okay a large bandwidth so in order to have a narrow bandwidth you can replace this to a EW version which is about for plus minus two kilohertz or even less than uh, I don't remember exactly what you can do here is you can use a relay okay to switch between those two ceramic filters and connect to the your out microcontroller digital output so you can select between one filter and another one if you want to hear uh, audio voice transmission you switch to this one if you want to hear Morse code you would switch you can switch to another one okay and what is happening here what is actually happening here this is the first this is the first intermediate frequency stage so I have here my mixer I have my 7 megahertz signal and all radio radio frequency signal coming from from my antenna this filter here as I showed you before that I replaced those crystals to this to this filter this filter is responsible uh, to choose some part of the frequency decided part of the frequency so in order to don't have so much frequencies coming directly to my my mixer I'm using a filter here to select the bandwidth I wanna put here in my receiving part of the circuit okay so it's very nice and very important to have this to avoid some interference from correlated frequencies and uh, also harmonics okay this mixer this mixer here uh, you can make it only one directly conversion if you want so you can you can insert it here on the DDS clock frequency okay oscillator you can insert the desired frequency okay for example if you want to receive from your antenna 7 megahertz okay you have a, here a filter to reject the non-decided frequencies so the 7 megahertz signal it's coming through this path okay and arriving here in the input of the mixer so in order to make a directly conversion you can insert a 7 megahertz signal here too so you make a mix it plus minus and you have uh, your your uh, full here okay and you have your signal uh, 
in this output here the, let's say the audio from the from the input signal here so if you have here a 7 megahertz signal and you want to convert this signal to the to the audio uh, to the audio range of the of the frequencies you came with the 7 megahertz signal here you just have to mix it with a 7 megahertz here but you have some other components coming out from your mixing okay so you are making a plus and minus when you are making the the mixing so what's what's nice to have here to have a, a conversion okay to have first conversion second conversion i did only one uh conversion in my in my receiver okay it's not the best one but what's the smaller assembly possible here and of course smaller budget too so i made only one conversion so this is why i'm inserting here seven megahertz or the frequency you wanna you wanna listen plus 455 kilohertz okay so when i'm making the mixing here the components in the output of my mixing will be something different from the previous one that i already told you okay i will have here uh, something now in the 400 my, my desired signal will be now something between 400 uh, okay 452 453 and 458 kilohertz why because i inserted here in the input of my mixing my desired frequency which is now for example 7 megahertz plus my intermediated frequency for the first conversion which is 455 kilohertz so when i make this mixing here i can have some components here okay and my desired uh, information will be something close to 455 kilohertz it's interesting because now i move my information to different areas okay uh, far away from each other so now you have the 455 kilohertz here and the other information is another part of the spectrum and and when you are now filtering this information to the, your audio amplifier you are, you will not listen this other uh, part of the spectrum this other information sorry to explain this in english is, is quite hard but uh, okay my mat my native uh, language is portuguese okay good so this is what we actually have here okay coming from this output 455 kilohertz nice no uh, sorry yes actually out from the output of this this filter ceramic filter of course your information this is a 10 kilohertz 6 db band filter so you're receiving also other frequencies attenuated but you are receiving information good information between so it's 10 kilohertz filter you are receiving good information between 445 kilohertz and 400 sorry 450 kilohertz and 460 kilohertz okay because your center frequency is 455 okay and it's a 10 kilohertz bandwidth filter so you have here now your filter information look at that it was very nice to make this uh this first conversion here so in order to split your your information in the spectrum okay split your components in the spectrum and only recover the component the important one okay the information one one which is now plus for for 455 kilohertz for example okay so it's it's very cool now you have here the information okay if the information you want to listen 
it's an amplitude modulation. The information arrives here with the carrier. Okay, so this circuit here, this component, it's very important one. It's a uh, could call like a uh, active demodulator, okay? And some some amplif amplifiers also for for the for the radio frequency for the for the receiving frequency here, okay? And uh, this circuit comes with some some feedback loop, okay? We have here. It's important to have a trim pot here so you can make a fine adjustment on your feedback uh, on your feedback line here. But if you want to listen, if you want to listen, um, single sideband signals, okay? With amplitude modulation, it can be possible if you don't want to use this called BFO frequency, which is our DDS clock too, okay? So if you have the carrier here, this will be enough to, to provide the demodulation and send the signal to your, to your audio amplifier, okay? But if you wanna, if you wanna receive, and we wanna receive in our case, um, single sideband signals, because normally amateur radios transmit uh, in this band uh, Morse code in single sideband. Okay, especially in in LSB or S or USB, but normally. A lower side band, okay, LSB, and also audio. Uh, we have some many many transmissions in this in this band in LSB lower side band, okay. So to have this, I will explain you later on in the in the software part. You have to inject some signal here, okay. So it's very important to inject here some signal in order to demodulate this single side band. Okay, I'll explain you this later on on the on the software part. Okay, some coupling capacitors, pa pa pa, and this is the audio, very easy one, audio output. Ah, remember this one comes from comes from my rock mic board. Okay, the one I told you responsible for the for the feedback. Okay, for the manipulation feedback. Good. So, what we did actually for for providing the signal, okay, for adapt the signal from the DDS. This is the DDS board you can purchase on the internet. To the carrier input of our circuit, which is located here, okay, and to the DDS clock one intermediate frequency input here. We made some adaptations, okay. So, first, for the carrier, I use a coupling capacitor. It's very important to use a coupling capacitor, otherwise, we will directly, directly uh, change the, the polarization circuit you have here, and you can affect this amplifier, okay? So, it's very important to use a coupling capacitor to only, to only feed here. Uh, uh, radio frequency signal, okay? So this is why it's very important. I used here some wire. It's, uh, actually, it was very interesting. I made some experiences with a 50 ohm uh, resistor, a 50 ohm resistor, and I, I, I would say uh, my best. Uh, result for the the for the power output was using such kind of wire here it's quite strange but was the best uh, impedance adaption actually I have here to connect to the my my preamplifier so this is why it's this kind of strange uh, connection here it's uh, just a wire you can make the experiments uh, in your case because your circuit will probably change a little bit so it's important to make some some experiments, okay? Use an oscilloscope for that's very important. Uh, DDS clock one, the DDS clock one, it's actually here, the 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 carrier, the carrier node. Sorry, the the frequency responsible for making my 
first conversion here, okay, my first mixing uh, circuit. So this is actually normal, normally, the one I explained you before, the decided frequency you, you want to you wanna get the information plus 455 kilohertz or you can move a little bit to receive a lower sideband for uh, for audio proposals for, for voice proposal I explained you this in the software part okay but this is the first mixing the first conversion state okay stage sorry and this is the input frequency here and as I explained you I already explained you I use it a 50 ohm in order to make this coupling and also a 250 picofarad capacitor so it's smaller capacitor okay but with this uh, with this assembled here I got a really good uh, I would say of course it's not a sinusoidal web wave because this DDS is actually normally a square wave but I got a very good waveform here in this input using this uh, use this configuration here okay but uh, important uh, we can you can select also the current you wanna put on your DDS so if you decrease the current you can have a smooth uh, wave signal in the output let's call like that not but in this case I want a strong waveform for my my carrier even if, if you have uh, a square waveform here for your carry is not a big deal because you have a very good uh, low pass filter circuit here so you have actually in the output a very very good and stable uh, frequency okay it's good so that's it for the moment uh -huh, okay let's move ahead here Okay, the microcontroller circuits. I'm using fewer pins of the microcontroller. Okay, those I2C pins is uh, responsible to send information to the display. This is the the voltage regulator. Okay, ah, the 13.8 volts comes from the Rockmite Z1, which is actually let me show you here. Okay this uh, coil uh, here okay good so i took from this output the, the the information here the supply here okay the encoder is connecting those pins pa0 1 and 2 pa0 pa1 pa2 uh, okay ah the manipulating information okay I have here I will show you in the rock might yes in the rock might I have this output of the microcontroller this is responsible to switch your power uh, transmit your your power stage of your transmitter okay to send to transmit information so you have to send to the microcontroller the some signal in order to to say to the microcontroller that he needs to change some settings in the DDS generation frequency okay so this is why we did this part okay moving ahead sorry yes so this is the DDS it's a I2C connection okay and Ah, I use some load okay in each output I connect a 1 kilo ohm 1.5 kilo ohm resistor okay to put some load so I made this connection directly on the board as you can see here let me show you okay look at that 1.5 1.5 1.52 it's important very very important you can even use as I use it here audio cables why because you have a shielding on those cables okay to prevent some interference so use those audio cables they are very good to send the the signal to the to the radio frequency area of your board and uh, 
it's very important for shielding okay so I use those audio small cables here okay so let me show you here so I connected here in this clock signal clock output of course it's a shielded cable okay it's an audio cable so you have to connect the GND to the shield of your cable and the internal wire of your cable you connect to the clock output okay so this is all the connection for the DDS clock zero and as I already explained you before the DDS clock zero uh, adaptation circuit it's this one and this is actually here my board okay another one is the DDS clock one DDS clock one which is actually send information to this part and I make this uh, adaptation here okay and the output from this capacitor goes directly to the, my fre intermediated frequency signal which is actually here in my mixing okay good uh, but I have to I have to explain you here look at that this is the DDS clock 2 so this signal as I told you before okay is responsible to set some carrier okay to single sideband signals what is actually the the basis of those single sideband signals they don't have they don't carry a carrier in the in the signal okay uh, yes yes it's not amplitude but in, in amplitude modulation signal you have the carrier a big part of the energy of the transmission is in the carrier which don't have actual information for the audience but in single side band transmission you just select the lower side or the higher side and transmit and you don't have actually a carrier but here we have a demodulator okay active demodulator so you have to to put some carrier some way to this demodulator and this comes from the bfo okay and if you wanna listen a uh, morse code uh, sound a morse code signal okay you can insert it here your f intermediated frequency uh, your intermediated frequency which is 404 kilohertz okay plus or minus okay 800 hertz why because 800 hertz it's a good uh, a good tone to to listen okay for the Morse code you can use another one but I choose 800 Hertz so if you insert it here 455 plus 800 Hertz so you are actually inserting here a carrier with the information you want to demodulate and listen in your speaker which is 800 hertz actually so this is very cool very cool but be careful if you insert here a strong signal you can have problems because these these components they have uh, automatic gain control so if you insert a strong signal here you kill your information and this equipment will not send any information to the speaker so you have to you have to insert here a really really low as low as possible signal it cannot be too low otherwise you will not demodulate any carrier here any signal here but it cannot be too strong otherwise you kill your information okay so this is why we make this adaptation using a 2.7 pico faraday capacitor in series with a 407 kilo ohms so look at that it's a crazy uh, stuff here so we actually are we are actually feeding here with a really small some millivolts carrier signal comes from the BFO okay this is is very cool 
okay and that's it uh, if I miss some part sorry I think it's it's a lot of information huh, to, to, to one only one video but it's it's good to send you all those informations in order to to give you all the details so you can you can have a, a easier path to construct your equipment okay okay uh, some parts some easy parts here this is the potentiometer to regulate the, your your audio output your audio amplitude okay you have here connections for the encoder you have here connections for the switches that that switches i already show you in this video and that's all for the circuit parts let's move now to the software part the last part of the video so the last part of the video is actually the software side okay it's uh, i would say the the easier to the easiest part of the the project okay it's already done uh, you don't need to make such big modifications here but it's important to understand the concepts in order to make changes if you need if you want okay first in the cube uh, ID, ID you have here a cube MX perspective okay a graphical representation perspective of your project I will open here okay first hint any modification you made on the on the graphical part and save will will change something in your files in your in your text files of course you are made in uh, configurations in the microcontroller and this reflects directly to the test part of the code okay this is just uh, some some help to provide easier way easier information in order to fill those those text files in the proper way so if you want to put some uh, other input here if you want to make some change here feel feel comfortable comfortable to do uh, in this software I try to avoid as much as possible uh, interference okay and noise sources okay so this is why I'm not using external oscillators external crystals anyway the the blue pill board as you already know have his its own crystal for RTC or even for the external oscillation oscillator for the microcontroller but are you quit are you not i don't want to use this it can be a significant noise source so for for radio frequency especially so what i did and it's more than enough for my for my circuit i'm using the internal 8 megahertz rc oscillator okay it's not accurate precise as the external cry crystal oscillator but it's enough here for my for my proposals and I reach a maximum of 64 megahertz which is actually a lot for this the circuit it's okay okay so this is very important hint okay it's already done uh, be careful because if you wanna for example disable the and this is very common uh, if you want to disable the serial wire the debug connection okay you can only connect again the microcontroller after you of course after you record the program you can only connect again if you provide some uh, some way to that like pushing the reset push button of the microcontroller using the st link software make a flash erase release the button in the moment after you press the flash erase command and after that you can erase the microcontroller and you can set the serial wire and record again the microcontroller but this is just uh, actually need if you disable these outputs so in order if you want to program again the microcontroller just leave these outputs 
uh, connected like that okay there are not so many difficult things here i'm using three external lines interrupt uh, it's not a big deal in the programming area of course in the hardware is different but in the programming area to make this uh, assembly it was not was not a big deal okay the i2c frequencies and so on so be careful if you want to save your modifications here, okay, you will immediately make some changes in the files here, okay? One of those files is responsible for the, for the interrupts, for the external interrupts, okay? So be careful. Why? Because if you gonna hear in the interruption.c file, you have here, for example, the calling of these functions, how GPIO external uh, interrupt request handler. Let's find where comes this. Okay. Search is there from this file. How GPIO.c. And look at that. It's very important to avoid uh, some problems in the regarding to bouncing the bouncing when you are moving your encoder it's very important to put uh, the the interruption clear flag okay uh, the interruption clear macro okay here after the external interrupt callback because when it comes here, when you have a, a interrupt request handler, okay, when you have an interrupt, this will call your callback, which is here in this code, the main code. This is the callback. Okay, the callback is responsible to check, for example, if you press your encoder button, okay, here, sorry, and if you want to ch change. The, 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 the positions of the cursors and the mode of your encoder is, is in this one. You have here also input for the transmitting enable pin. I already explained you in the circuit, okay? If the RockMite board wants to send some signal that you will transmit, you need to, sup to provide a, a carrier for the transmission. So this is an external interrupt pin. And I have also here the external interrupt pin for the clock of my encoder. So any kind of interruptions will trigger this callback. But for those interruptions like the encoder one, the treatment for the encoder, I have some debousing, okay? Some delay because I have a lot of noise in this actually the in this these mechanical switches, okay? So this bouncing it's very important for to uh, try to avoid those noise. Anyway, you ha still have some problems with those mechanical parts, but you will avoid some if you do like this. So first, remember when you save the project from the from the device configuration tool. Okay, you will automatically put this clear interruption flag before calling the callback. So in the moment you have an interruption, he will immediately clear this interruption and this interruption will be ready for the next one. So it's very important to avoid such problem, put this interruption after the callback. So every single time you change here in the graphical interface and save this, uh, this part of the code will be switched, will be change the places okay so be careful it's just an important hint before dig in the main file and also ah, let's start it with the library for the dds good so basically you have in the dds some registers okay Okay, you have two PLLs in this DS actually. Three outputs, three clock outputs, but only two PLL. So you have to be careful when you are using those outputs to use not the three at the same time. You can use, 
but they have to be related in the frequencies, at least two of them. But if you want to use three different uh, frequencies, you have to switch between those. You have to select at least only two outputs at the same time. Okay. So you have here reset and so and so and so on. Ah, this is very important and you probably need to move a little bit higher or lower this value. This is the clock from the crystal of your DDS. It's not a perfect clock. You don't have a perfect clock. So it's not a 25 megahertz clock. It's a different one. So using a frequency meter or a oscilloscope, select one of them to make this calibration. Okay. Put the oscilloscope, the frequency meter in one of the DDS outputs and calibrate this value. Okay. This is very, very important to do because it changes from component to component. Okay. So here I can set between those three outputs. And I did some changes in this code, some modifications here, which is important to tell you. Don't care about that. Don't care about that. Some, uh, some related Arduino stuff. Okay, but it's nice. So if you put here zero, it means you don't want to transmit anything in this output. So be careful. If you are using those three outputs, you have to do something like that. So read this register and set the information of the register. This is the output zero, the clock zero. So this is why I'm using 80 in this information for the output one still 80, for the output two still 80, for this, for this register. Oh, you have a register for clock two, register for clock one, and register for clock zero. So this is responsible actually to put in lower power mode the output of the of this clock control. And you have also here some mask enable. Okay. So this is the mask enable and this is the bit you have to set to make the, the enable or disable mask for the output. This is for the output one, zero. Output one is actually two, and output two is actually three. And also you have the output enable, okay? You have to disable the output enable. So it's very important to do that in order to really, really reduce, uh, remove this output from, from sender signal, okay? But if you change your frequency to a value different than zero, you have to set those outputs again. Okay, so it's doing like that, it's possible. Uh, okay, this is something to, to make the calculations for a multiply factor, PLL frequency, and so on, and so on, and so on. Uh, okay, this is also something important. Okay, uh, look at that PLLA. I'm using the PLLA for the output zero, I'm using PLLB for the output one and I'm using PLLA because I just have two PLLs for output three. So it means I cannot use output zero with some frequency and output three with another totally different frequency at the same time. But it's okay for my proposals here. But I can use at the same time output one and output two, uh, zero and one and output two and output one at the same time but because they have different PLLs. Okay, uh, more. This is a uh, register and some informations in this register, okay, like this number four, if you see here, four, for F, for C, and for F. If you put the number, the hexadecimal four F, you wanna send, um, Eight, I don't remember if eight or 20 million pairs. I think it's eight million pairs output. I don't remember exactly. So it's the maximum current driving in the output of your uh, DDS, of your clock source. So I want a really strong signal for 
my carrier, which is responsible for the transmitting part, but I don't want a strong signal for my intermediated frequency, okay? I want to put as much as sinusoidal wave as possible instead of square wave in this output here for the reception part. So this is why I'm using a smaller current. And for this one, I choose the stronger current, okay? So it's some hints for the library of your DDS. Okay, let's finish now with the main code, okay? This is something you already know, the variables, global variables, and so on. Okay, I have three different frequencies, the, okay, the BFO, the intermediate frequency, and the carrier frequency. So it's here it's the old, just to tell you if you change the carrier by your adjustment. Okay, good. What you have? Ah, I'm using a EPROM. Okay, a EPROM. Internal flash of the microcontroller. I emulated the H2 Pro to save the last frequency. But you have a limited amount of savings in this area between 10,000 and 100,000. So be careful. So first of all, I check the the EPROM. If I don't have any information, oh, sorry, if I have some information, I just take this, this information, I read from the EPROM, and I put this information in the frequency hertz variable. So if you turn off your equipment and turn on again, and you have some previous information saved in this area, you, you return from that frequency directly. But if you don't have any saved information there, you will set to the first frequency, which is set the megahertz. I have some delay, which is come basically from my delay library that probably you already know from my, my, my course. Okay. And I set those timers to value zero just to start them. And this is to send information to the, to the LCD. So this is my call sign, okay? Just a two seconds message, a starting message for the equipment, okay? And this is the super loop. In the super loop, uh, first of all, I'm checking if my frequency, okay? My transmitting frequencies or receiving frequency is different from the last one in the last cycle. Look at that. Every time I just set my old frequency to the actual frequency. I have some delay. When I come again in this super loop and my actual frequency have had some changes, of course, if it's different from the old frequency, I'm entering this, okay, conditional. Or if I set the variable flag change mode, I can also, I will also enter here. Here, I have some information, okay? I took the frequency in megahertz, in hertz, and divided by 100 just to show this frequency on the display, okay? I have here the possibility for three different modes. This is the single sideband CW. Uh, this, is, this fits to receiving Morse code. This fits to amplitude modulation and the third option in this variable fits to single side mode uh, audio or voice reception okay so this is why look at that so interesting the bfo as i already explained you in the circuit for the cw it's 455 8 hertz remember the 800 hertz which is responsible for making my reception tone of the CW, it's here. The frequency intermediate is actually centered in five, 455. For amplitude modulation, 455 BFO, 455 intermediate frequency. And for SSB phony, I set in the middle of my, my, my filter bandwidth, okay, that one I explained. So, 
uh, which is good for amateur radio so i put here in 457 500 this is for lower sideband it's bigger it's greater than it's 2500 hertz greater than the 455 kilohertz so it means it's a lower sideband it means i want to capture everything below this this 2500 hertz frequency okay so this is for lower sideband which is actually the common and the proper way normally radio amateurs transmit for 80 meters 40 meters okay but from 20 meters ahead normally they use upper sideband not lower sideband so it's a little bit change if you want an upper sideband you have to put it here instead of for 157 500 you have to put here 452 500 okay no hard feelings bfo bfo 457 550 i just made a small shift 50 hertz to put my carrier in order to demodulate the signal okay that's enough and i set those frequencies here the intermediated frequency hertz which is composed by the the transmitting frequency the carrier you want to receive 7 megahertz for example plus this 455 for this one okay and the bfo is here okay it's the third output i use i can also set here so this is for reception in the reception i wanna the frequency for the bfo and the frequency for the intermediated frequency okay this is just to make to draw a line so you can see actually which part of the cursor you wanna change in the the, the display and i update the screen here be careful use the update screen always inside this otherwise you you send information every time to the display okay if you put here and this is not good for the radio frequency reception you can make some noise some some extra noise okay good uh, some more hints here ah this is very cool every five minutes i will save my actual frequency in the emulated e2 pro in the flash pro and i will reset the timer to save again after five minutes but 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 i'm using the sleep function aha uh -huh. so every single five seconds of inactivity inactivity it means you are not transmitting or you are not moving the cursor okay the frequency so every single second in activity here you put the microcontroller in sleep mode so it's not for saving energy of course it's not necessary in this circuit okay but it's to try to reduce the the noise in your receive reception okay it's very very nice how can we wake from this sleep so every time we have an external interrupt the microcontroller will wake up from this from the sleep mode and it's very important i want uh, it's not necessary to do this two times but it's here uh, you you need to reset this timer in order to have another five seconds again and you have to resume okay you have to enable the flag to resume the counter to resume the interruption of the tick which is responsible for the base time of the microcontroller so which is responsible for example for the delay functions okay and for everything so it's very very important to resume the tick if you call this several times when you are calling your callback it's not a big deal it's not a big problem to you. you can call this every time this is just a enabling okay it's setting some uh, some registers okay to enabling the tick good to finish this part here we also have the transmission so every time every time you are transmitting 
okay let's put it here every time you are transmitting you are sending information to a external interrupt pin this external interrupt pin is actually the tx in enable pin you are coming to this part of the the project if your frequency is lower than 700 uh, sorry 7 megahertz uh, 7 megahertz 50 kilohertz okay so you have a range between 7 megahertz and 7 megahertz 50 kilohertz to transmit cw this is normal regulation from the from the from the anatel here in brazil i don't know if fcc in us is the same uh, usually the amateur bands in the 40 meters they transmit morse codes between those uh, those ranges okay so using this you make some limitations for the transmit of course this is code you can change here uh, it's up to you so here when the when i'm using the transmission i have to reset okay to release those two outputs for the reception part of the circuit which is which is the bfo and the intermediated frequency and i have to set my transmitting carrier to the decided frequency i want to transmit i you reset this timer and i you set this flag so it means every single time you are manipulating you are sending to this part of the the, the interruption you are setting this information here every single time okay good but if you wanna stop to transmit now okay you finish your message you leave your transmission now so you have this timer reset you have this flag so you start counting now two seconds two seconds only two seconds so you this is nice to keep your equipment in uh, transmitter mode as long as as much as possible when you are sending your message okay and after these two seconds of the finishing of tra your transmission you set you release the output from the main carrier you set the reception frequencies for the bfo and the intermediated frequency and you come again to the reception mode of your equipment this this can be changed okay this is common a parameter from professional radios they they have a possibility in a menu to change this this inactivity time i don't know activity time for the for the transmission okay it's possible so everything is it's fine when you know where to configure here okay that's it this is the part responsible to, for moving the the frequency for changing the frequency ahead and okay increasing and decreasing the frequency and you can try to make the best as possible here in this these timers these delays here for for debousing but it's quite hard to, to deal with this this such kind of uh, <laughs> poor uh, quality uh, mechanical encoders <laughs> believe me uh, here is the multiplication factor of the frequency you want to increase or decrease and that's it so this is all we have for 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 your explanation i hope this can help you to build your own equipment thank you very much for watching this video and i want to thank my colleague andres he's also a run radio operator he gave me a lot of hints during this project uh, gave me some guidance uh, when I was starting and when I was making this this project okay and helped me a lot uh, with some some trials okay some some hints uh, some examples thank you very much Andres for all the explanation during this project and also other other projects and thank you very much guys for watching this uh, this video i hope this can help you during your projects and this was the last message from papa uniform 2 x-ray kilo foxtrot thank you very much 73